So there are different ways of reducing features. Uh, they can broadly be categorized into filter based methods, wrapper based method and embedding based method. So what is filter based method? We take one feature at a time and determine its utility and once we know uh, whether it is useful or not, uh, we will discard it or keep it and then we will, if we have kept it, we will take all the kept features and we'll train the machine learning classifier based on that so in the in a first let's take a step back right so let's say you have features x1 all the way up to x100 you have a lot of features right and then your samples are from x11 uh, all the way up to x1000 comma 1 all the way up to x1000 comma 100 Okay, so you have 1000 different samples and you have 100 different uh, dimensions. Okay, so let's say this is your data set, right? Uh, so what is feature reduction in a nutshell is to find subsets, which is basically find these columns, the best subset that is suited for the problem. Okay, so it is basically a best subset selection, best subset of features. Now, how many subsets there are? We have 2 to the power 100 subsets. Right? Any feature can be in the subset or not be in the subset. So, 2 to the power 100 subsets is a lot of subsets. So, how do we decide which subset is the best? We are not going to test each and every subset. If we test each and every subset, it can be computationally very uh, infeasible. So, what a filter based method does is that it doesn't look at two features together or three features together. It just looks at one feature at a time. Okay. So, basically, what it does, filter based method is uh, um, for each feature, okay, uh, decide keep versus keep versus discard okay and then once we have done that then train an ml model train ml with kept features okay what wrapper would do is wrapper would generate several subsets so for some number of features for some number of subsets some n subsets generate subset okay uh, train and test train and validate ml model on the subset okay on the subset and basically compare which which one is the best embedded models are uh, embedded methods are those where the model training and feature selection is happening tightly together as a part of a single process so example would be uh, lasso l1 regularization for linear regression or logistic regression so this is where uh, subset selection and ml are integrated okay, so these are roughly three different ways of looking at features let's look at each of these in a little more detail uh, so before we get into uh, using a large set of features it's always a good idea to eliminate some features that are highly correlated with other features which one of the two to pick that is uh, a matter of uh, subjectivity or you, we can have some sort of a utility metric to find out which, which i will talk about in a little bit so but uh, keep that in mind that if i plot the correlation matrix of features so let's say this is feature x1 to x100 and this is also x1 to x100 and I take the absolute value of the correlations because strong negative and strong positive correlations both are to be considered as high correlations. So obviously the diagonal will have high correlations because we are correlating with itself. But you can see that you will see these block structures 
where the features are correlated with each other sometimes these blocks appear not around the diagonal but far away so what this means is that there is a group of features that are similar to each other and i can permute this matrix so if i move some rows up i also have to move the same columns left so i can permute the order of the features so that uh, these uh, uh, high correlations actually appear as blocks around the diagonal so each of those blocks depending on some subjective criteria that if they are above the correlations are above a certain threshold those can basically say uh, give an indication that all but one of the features in this block can be eliminated okay and that can lead to feature redu reduction so there is a, a correlation based clustering methods that are available to reduce features uh, but what threshold to use that is subjective uh, whether we use a 0.9 threshold or a 0.8 threshold that is subjective depending on how much reduction we want and then which of the features to keep as a representative of all the features that are correlated in that block that is also uh, uh, something that we can play with uh, so we can look at the individual utility of the features which i will talk about next so utility of the features can be if you look at one feature at a time can be based on how they are related to different uh, uh, to the predicted the variable to be predicted the target variable so in regression we have ti right we have t and then let's say we have x1 through xd okay. if i take the correlation of t with x1 with x2 with x3 and with xd and take the absolute value of that correlation that might give me an indication of which of these xi's is useful so the ones that are highly correlated are most likely to actually give us a good answer uh, are going to give us a good subset for predicting the values of t okay so because we are going to make we are going to estimate t as w1 times x1 w2 times x2 etc etc so the ones that are highly correlated they are they are more likely to uh, be useful in the regression model so that is one thinking uh, obviously this does not take into account non-linear relationships this is only based on linear relationships it also not take it does not take into account interaction between xi and xj it does not take into account when xi and xj together are more predictive uh, or are perfectly predictive but uh, then let's say xk or something like that so it doesn't it doesn't uh, help us with looking at like subsets of size greater than one uh, so it's a filter based method uh, so that is how we will do it in regression in classification we can do a t-test in t-test what we are saying is that let's say your t belongs to two values right so t belongs to either 0 or 1 or minus 1 and plus 1 so that is your two class classification and for one of them x is uh, so if I'm looking at x for t is equal to minus 1 it is uh, distributed like this and let's say for x is equal to plus 1 it is distributed like this so this is for t is equal to 1 now this is for xi for for different xi's for different values of i i will have these two distributions will be will have different overlaps right so i want to class we, i want to select those that have least overlap in a relative sense so relative to their own individual uh, variances uh, for that there is something called a t-test which assumes first of all that these variables are distributed in a gaussian manner if on it works only if you assume that they are distributed as gaussian variables uh, and then basically there's a formula for that we will take uh, let's say the mean uh, so if i take x some variable x and I'm taking uh, it's uh, whenever t is, t is 1 I can take uh, its mean okay? and then I can take all all x's when t is minus 1 I'll take the difference of the two that tells me how far apart these two are right or let's just call it mu 1 and mu 2 mu 1 and mu minus 1 that will be easy so I will take mu 1 minus mu minus 1 right and I will divide it by I also want to look at the individual uh, variances of the two so I will also look at this sigma 1 square 
by n1 which is the number of samples in when t is equal to 1 okay, plus sigma minus 1 square n minus 1 okay. so you can look up these t test the exact definition of the t test in standard uh, reference manuals and basically what that is saying is that the not only is the difference important and i can take them the mod of this not only is the difference important but i also want to divide it by the uh, the individual widths of the gaussians because if the gaussians are too broad then the difference a uh, small difference a uh, particular constant difference does not matter only if the variances are narrow only then a constant difference between the means matters right so the variables that give you high t values are more likely to help you with the classification the variables or the features that are giving you low t value are not likely to help you with the classification then there are other ways of finding it such as aic and bic a chi k information criteria and bayesian information criteria that look at the likelihood of the data that you have predicted of the model that you have of the data being generated from that model and uh, then it also penalizes for the number of uh, variables that you have included in the model so a, a way to uh, circumvent a lot of these criteria is to actually have a validation test and see which subset works best on the validation test or do cross validation 